While SpaceX is clearly good at delivering satellites to orbit quickly and efficiently, they almost always put on a beautiful show for the locals and thousands of viewers watching online. And the latest launch of Falcon Heavy was no exception. For one, the reusable rocket had no landing legs installed and all three boosters were expended during the mission, a deviation from their typical recovery protocol. Besides that, the upper stage featured a gray band at the top crucial to the success of the launch. But what's more important, the fairing's fiery re-entry is also the hottest yet for SpaceX. So what is the key difference? How is Elon Musk pushing harder on the Falcon Heavy? All this and more in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Launching at 8.26 p.m. ET last Sunday, the Falcon Heavy lifted off under dark skies. The rocket ascended back into the sunlight about three minutes into the flight, which illuminated the exhaust plume into a beautiful orangish color. Following the side core booster separation, the center core of the Falcon Heavy continued putting on a show high in the upper atmosphere. The enormous exhaust plume was a brilliant white color, almost in the shape of a flower. It's only the sixth launch ever for the rocket, but the second so far in 2023. Among active rockets, its power is only bested by NASA's Space Launch System, which has only flown once, and SpaceX's in-development Starship, which exploded before reaching space during a test launch earlier in April. It's essentially three Falcon 9 rockets strapped together with 27 Merlin engines that produce 5.1 million pounds of thrust on liftoff. However, unlike previous Falcon Heavy launches, SpaceX did not bring any of its three first stage boosters back for a vertical landing. This mission takes about six hours to reach its targeted orbit, requiring three burns by the upper stage engine. The single engine powering the Falcon Heavy's upper stage shut down eight minutes after launch, putting the vehicle in an initial parking orbit. Two more firings were planned over the next three hours and 44 minutes to get the satellite into the planned geosynchronous orbit 22,300 miles above the equator. This is because direct insertion into geosynchronous orbit is one of the most challenging mission types in the launch industry. A geostationary orbit, also referred to as a geosynchronous equatorial orbit, is a circular geosynchronous orbit 35,786 kilometers or 22,236 miles in altitude above Earth's equator. In comparison to low Earth orbit, for example, GEO is much more taxing and requires an extremely powerful launch vehicle when the weight of the payload is high. The profile requires extended battery life on the upper stage, plus a custom band of gray thermal paint on the rocket to help ensure the kerosene fuel does not freeze during the hours spent in the cold environment of space. For this reason, there was no need for SpaceX to have landing legs or even grid fins on a single one of the three boosters. As far as what happened to them, the boosters were expended by falling into the Atlantic Ocean after separation. Two of the three boosters had flown previously, with one launching for the eighth time and another for the third. The center stage is the Rookie. The nominal payload capacity to a geostationary transfer orbit is 8 tons, or 18,000 pounds, with recovery of all three first stage cores. The price per launch is $97 million US versus 26.7 tons or 59,000 pounds in fully expendable mode. This helps put in perspective the payload and performance increases when the boosters are expended. Viasat has not said how much it paid SpaceX for the launch, Intelsat officials said last year SpaceX charged a premium for a launch where the booster is expended. But that's not all for this special launch. If you're a big fan of SpaceX, you'll realize there is a gray band on part of the upper stage. Ordinarily, Falcon's upper stages are nearly indistinguishable from each other. But the upper stage, stored behind the latest upper stage in the foreground, features a unique gray band around the bottom of its airframe. In July of 2019, SpaceX tested another Falcon 9 upper stage with the same gray band, which a spokesperson explained was meant to improve the rocket's longevity in orbit. Long orbital coasts of six or more hours are necessary for some of the most challenging launch trajectories. Direct to geostationary launches are the most common types of missions to require long coast capabilities and are often demanded by the U.S. military. The gray band's purpose is to increase the amount of heating absorbed from sunlight to warm the liquid kerosene, or RP-1 fuel, contained within the part of the rocket. When it gets too cold, kerosene, which freezes at a much higher temperature than Falcon's liquid oxygen oxidizer, becomes viscous and slush-like before it freezes solid. If ingested, slushy fuel would likely prevent ignition or destroy the upper stage's Merlin engine. And finally, 
Even the protective pieces of a SpaceX rocket made dramatic waves when they finally came back to Earth after the launch. SpaceX has shared amazing re-entry footage from one of the two fairings that flew on the most recent Falcon Heavy flight. This is the first time that previously flown fairings have been used on a Falcon Heavy flight. Shortly after the second stage separated and began its burn to insert the payloads into geostationary Earth orbit, the fairing halves deployed, exposing the three spacecraft to space. After deploying from the second stage, the fairing halves drifted to their apogee, or highest point, before beginning their journey back through Earth's atmosphere. This is the most ambitious attempt at fairing recovery yet, with the fairings speeding through the atmosphere at 15 times the speed of sound. Fairing re-entry on the Viasat 3 mission was the hottest and fastest we've ever attempted, SpaceX officials wrote in a tweet on Tuesday, May 2nd. Indeed, this time the MECO and Stage 2 separation was at 17,000 plus kilometers per hour. This is how insane the full power of a Falcon Heavy rocket is. Following their harrowing journey through the atmosphere, the fairings deploy a parachute and land gently in the Atlantic Ocean. Stationed more than 1,200 miles from Florida, its furthest trip yet, fairing recovery ship Doug, named after the Demo 2 crew member Doug Hurley, was ready and waiting to retrieve the fairings from the ocean. We don't yet know if one fairing half was recovered or both, but when the recovery ship returns to Port Canaveral, we will get our first glimpse at the fairings which did their best shooting star impersonations as they flew through the atmosphere. This is crispy, Elon Musk said. Sunday's flight capped an intense few days for SpaceX, which launched 46 of its own low-altitude Starlink internet satellites from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California on Thursday. The company then launched two medium-altitude broadband satellites for Luxembourg-based SES from the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station on Friday. All three launches highlight the ongoing race to deploy space-based internet relay stations to provide broadband access to customers anywhere in the world, including rural, hard to reach or underserved areas, as well as aircraft and ships at sea. The Falcon Heavy is scheduled to fly three more missions this year. The USS F-52 mission is scheduled for launch no earlier than June 23rd, while the Echo Star 24, or Jupiter 3 payload, will fly no earlier than this coming August. The NASA Psyche Asteroid Probe launch is targeted for October 5th. Then, in 2024, five missions are scheduled, with one of the most notable being Europa Clipper. Europa Clipper will conduct a detailed survey of Europa and use a sophisticated suite of science instruments to investigate whether the icy moon has conditions suitable for life. In short, before Starship enters active duty, Falcon Heavy will remain a formidable beast. And that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you soon.